Founded in 1860, Graceland Cemetery on Chicago's north side is one of the city's oldest and most famous burial sites. The Scenic Cemetery, often referred to as the Cemetery of Architects, is the final resting place of many prominent figures from Chicago's early history. The park-like cemetery is filled with stunning monuments, elaborate mausoleums, and fascinating statues from the 19th century. Many of the monuments are considered works of art and reflect a wide range of architectural styles. Beyond the architecture and historical significance, Graceland Cemetery is also shrouded in tales of the supernatural. From the haunting face of eternal silence to the mysterious grave of Inez Clark, the cemetery's lore is as rich as its history. In this video, I wander the winding pathways of Graceland Cemetery in Chicago and showcase some of its most fascinating monuments. I also delve into the haunted legends behind some of Graceland's most frequently visited graves. Graceland Cemetery in Chicago is full of fascinating monuments, but one that is truly eerie and unforgettable is Eternal Silence. The Eternal Silence Monument, which is often referred to as the Statue of Death, is made of bronze and stands 10 feet tall in front of a bold backdrop of black granite. The mysterious statue is one of the most frequently photographed monuments in the cemetery due to the creepy face hidden underneath a cloak and the bizarre legends associated with it. One legend says that if you look into the face of the sculpture, you will see your own fate. Another legend that persisted in the 1970s claimed the statue could not be photographed because the camera would allegedly malfunction or photos would appear blurry after being developed. Others claim to have seen the statue's arm move and the eyes of the cloaked face open while staring at them. It's unclear when the legends began, but they continue to attract curious visitors who take photographs of the statue and stare into its face. The Eternal Silence sculpture is based on depictions of the Grim Reaper and was designed in 1909 by famous artist Laredo Taft. It is also said the sculpture was the inspiration for the Blue Ghost character that later appeared on the box for the Ouija board. Although both have a similar appearance, the arm of the Blue Ghost is raised, whereas the arm of the statue is not, and the folds in the cloak are slightly different. The Eternal Silence Monument marks the final resting place of Dexter Graves, who was one of the first settlers to arrive in Chicago in 1831. Dexter passed away in 1844 and was originally buried in the Old City Cemetery, but was later moved to Graceland when his son Henry purchased the plot and, according to his will, had the monument built for his family after his passing in 1907. Henry Graves lived to be 86 years old and was buried in the family plot two years before the sculpture was placed there. Eternal Silence isn't the only Laredo Taft creation at Graceland Cemetery. Another amazing sculpture designed by Taft 20 years after Eternal Silence is the Crusader Monument for Victor Lawson, who passed away in 1925. The cloaked, 10-foot-tall medieval knight was sculpted in 1931 from black granite and commemorates the career of Victor Lawson, a famous publisher for the Chicago Daily News, a politically independent newspaper. The Crusader represents Lawson's crusade for the truth as a newspaper publisher and does not bear his name. Even the burial plot for Lawson and his family members was left unmarked, with only a plaque on the night that reads, Above all things truth beareth away the victory. Another grave in Graceland Cemetery that has attracted visitors for decades due to its haunted legends and mystery is the fascinating monument for Inez Clark. The gravesite features a stunning lifelike statue of a girl sitting on a bench inside of a glass box. The amazing statue is designed and hand-carved by German sculptor Andrew Gagel, who is also known for sculpting the Lulu Fellow statue at Rose Hill Cemetery. It is unknown whether or not the statue resembles how Inez appeared in real life, but the intricate details of the sculpture are impressive nonetheless. Many mysteries and legends surround the Inez Clark Monument and the real name of the girl that was buried beneath the statue in 1880. Most of the confusion surrounding the girl's identity comes from the name engraved in the monument because Inez Clark does not appear on burial records or the census. However, records later revealed that the real name of the girl laid to rest in the plot is likely Inez Briggs, not Inez Clark. The last name Briggs is said to have come from her mother's first marriage, and the name Clark comes from her mother's second marriage. There are also stories and legends about Inez Clark's true cause of death, the most common legend that's been told for decades says she was struck by lightning after being locked out of her home by her parents as a punishment. Another version of the story says Inez was struck by lightning during a family picnic, but these stories were later proven to be untrue. 
Inez Clark passed away from diphtheria, a highly contagious disease that took the lives of many young adults at the time. She was only six years old. Inez Clark's grave is also well known for its haunted legends and ghost sightings that have occurred near the monument. The ghost of a girl wearing 1800s clothing, believed to be Inez, has allegedly been seen playing in the cemetery near the gravesite. The eerie sightings have been reported by cemetery workers, visitors, and even children who interacted with the girl their parents could not see. Another creepy ghost story relates to the legend of the lightning strike. The story says a night watchman was patrolling the cemetery on a stormy night and noticed the glass box was empty, but when he returned to the gravesite after the storm passed, the statue was inside the box again. The watchman was allegedly so frightened by the experience that he quit shortly after. Whether the haunted legends of Inez Clark's grave are true or not, the legends have been cemented into the history of Graceland Cemetery and continue to attract curious visitors year-round. One of the largest and most impressive monuments at Graceland Cemetery sits along the shores of Lake Willowmere on the far north side of the cemetery. The massive Palmer Monument was built in the early 1900s and stands 28 feet high by 40 feet in length with 16 fluted columns that resemble a Greek temple. The massive monument features two twin crypts made of granite with inverted torches on the side to symbolize extinguished life. Entombed within the two crypts are Potter Palmer and his wife Bertha, who passed away in 1918 after her husband. Three generations of the Palmer family are buried beneath the floor. The Palmers were one of Chicago's wealthiest families in the late 1800s. Potter Palmer ran a successful dry goods store and built a Palmer House Hotel in downtown Chicago. The original hotel burned down in the Chicago Fire of 1871, but it was later rebuilt with fireproof walls and still stands today. Potter also owned a portion of State Street and was responsible for many of the developments there at the time. The Palmer Monument can also be seen in the background of a famous horror movie. In 1978, the funeral scene from the movie Damien Omen 2 was filmed at Graceland Cemetery on the north side of the monument near the lake. Not far from the Palmer Crypts is the massive marble monument for William Kimball who died in 1904 at the age of 76. The Kimball Monument is truly stunning and one of the largest structures at Graceland Cemetery. The monument features huge marble pillars and a weathered angel who looks over William and his wife Evelyn who are entombed beneath the floor. William Kimball came to Chicago from Maine in 1857 at the age of 29 and eventually became a successful manufacturer of pianos. In 1892, the Kimballs built a massive million-dollar home on Prairie Avenue in Chicago, and although no paranormal activity has been reported at the monument, the ghost of William's wife Evelyn is said to haunt their home that still stands today. Graceland Cemetery in Chicago contains many underground mausoleums that date back to the 1800s. Some of these ancient mausoleums are built into the sides of hills at ground level, while others have steps leading down to the vault's entrance. But one underground vault in particular has an interesting story and haunted legend behind it. Along the edge of the cemetery's wall near Montrose Avenue is the underground tomb of Ludwig Wolf Sr. The mausoleum was carved out of the side of a hill and features a stairway and a large ventilation system on top of the vault. Wolf was a coppersmith who came to Chicago from Germany in 1854 and eventually formed a successful business selling plumbing fixtures. He was hit with several tragedies throughout his life, including the death of his mother and three brothers when he was only 18 years old. Then in 1903, two of his daughters, along with two of his granddaughters, all perished in the devastating fire at the Iroquois Theater that claimed the lives of 600 people. Wolf passed away in 1911 at the age of 75 and was entombed in the underground family crypt in Graceland Cemetery, but not without safety measures in place. In the early 1900s, before the advancement of medical technology, it wasn't uncommon for someone to be presumed dead prematurely and buried alive. Although cases of live burials were not prevalent, they did occur, and the public's fear led to the invention of safety coffins. These special coffins were equipped with strings and bells, breathing tubes, and other devices that would alert the living in the event of being buried alive. It has been said that Ludwig was terrified about being buried alive, and before his death, equipped his tomb with emergency bells and a large ventilation cap on top of the vault to provide oxygen if needed. After Ludwig was laid to rest in his tomb though, he never rang the bell, because he was truly dead, but that wasn't the end of the story. After Ludwig's death, people reported seeing a large dog pacing back and forth on top of the vault and in front of the mausoleum stairs. 
It is unclear exactly when these sightings began, but the ghost dog was seen multiple times at night by people living in the apartments across the street who have a bird's eye view of the mausoleum. The dog is said to be the ghost of Ludwig's Irish wolfhound, but some people believe the animal is more than likely one of the many coyotes that live inside the cemetery. However, many people believe that what they saw was not a coyote because the animal seen at the vault was way too large, but either way, the ghost dog of Graceland Cemetery remains a mystery. Have you ever visited Graceland Cemetery in Chicago? Do you have a favorite monument or a ghost story to share? Leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts.